Good morning, everyone. I'm going to ask that we respectively stand um, as we sing the national anthem.
Good morning, please be seated. I would like to welcome each and every one of you on this uh, chilly morning. I'm glad that the rain held off, allowing us to come in here dry. Um, this is a very special occasion, and we have a number of individuals we would like to inv invite and welcome this morning. First of all, Dr. Felix Ngini, our keynote speaker and the SID Education Director. Dr. Paul Shongwe, the Haldeberg College of Higher Education College Chairperson and SAU President. Mrs. Kathy Nkabutu Njekwa, our SAU Education Director. Mr. Tony Neerings, our SAU Chief Financials Officer. Pastor Mandla Lupundwana, our SAU Executive Secretary, Pastor Koliso Lefume, our Cape Conference President, Pastor Arnold Alexander, the Cape Conference Executive Secretary, Pastor Eugene Carolis, our Cape Conference Sabbath School and Personal Ministries and Health Ministries Director, Pastor A.J. De Villiers, the Cape Conference Youth Director, Dr. Rako Metzi, our, H, our Haldeberg College of Higher Education Council member and the CEO of Umalusi, Dr. Gerald Dupree, our former SAU Education Director and also former President of Haldeberg College of Higher Education, Mrs. Sybil Dupree, our former SAU Communication Director. We also welcome Honorable Councillor Gregory Peck, our um, Somerset West Sub Council 8 um, Councillor, Dr. Bernard Ficker, uh, we welcome you as well. Pastor John Tumpkin, Cape Conference Pastor, as well as staff and students, ladies and gentlemen. On a more personal note, we'd like to thank you for your support um, of Prof. Reinecke, and especially family that are supporting her and her friends, watching online from Kinva. Kinvama in Ireland is Karen, um, Charlene's sister, as well as her brother-in-law Derek and their son Francis. Also her dear friends who have come through, we thank you Avril Nivot, uh, as well as Mr. and Mrs. Ingrid and Jean-Marc um, uh, Chelan, and any other guest in attendance here today who erroneously I may have missed. All of our guests watching online, through YouTube, as well as on Facebook, I welcome you all warmly to this very auspicious occasion. At this time, I'd invite you to bow your heads with me as we pray. Gracious God, faithful Father, sovereign Savior, you are the one who is robed in righteousness, the one who bears our burdens, the one who knows the plans that you have for us. We, your sons and daughters, are gathered in this place for the inauguration and the dedication of Dr. Charlene Renica. But we acknowledge that all our positions and our passions, all our plans and preparations, all our desires and intentions are of naught without your presence. And so we submit this service to you. We humbly invite and heartfully invoke you to tabernacle with us. And so may the words of our mouths and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Good morning. Can we all stand as we sing our opening hymn, Father, Lead Me Day by Day.
Good morning. I am going to introduce the speaker of the day, Dr. Felix Njini. I'll request you to sit down before we can do that. Thank you. Dr. Felix Njini is an ordained minister who served as a teacher, deputy head, and headmaster before being called into pastoral ministry. As a denominational employee, Dr. Njini served in different capacities as district pastor, conference executive secretary, conference education director, before being elected as education director of the former Zimbabwe Union Conference. After the realignment of the Zimbabwe Union Conference, he worked as education director of the Zimbabwe Central Union Conference and then as executive secretary of the same union. Currently, Dr. Njini is the SID education director. He holds a certificate in education with the University of Zimbabwe, a BTEC educational management degree with te technical Pretoria, and a BA theology with education degree from Solusi University. He did his MA religion with Solusi University, MED in educational administration, planning, and policy studies with Zimbabwe Open University, and a doctor of ministry degree with Adventist University of Africa. He is currently working on his PhD dissertation with Midlands State University. Dr. Njini is also an adjunct lecturer with Solusi University. He is married to Dambuzo, and they are blessed with four adult children. Thank you. The President of the Southern Africa Union Conference and Chair of Helderbeck College of Higher Education a Council, uh, Dr. Shongwe, um, our most distinguished and new President, uh, Dr. Shailene Reneke, the Executive Secretary of uh, SAU, Pastor Mandla Lupondwana, uh, the CFO of Southern Africa, uh, African Union, um, Elder Nerings, um, the SAU Education Director, uh, Sister Kathy Njekwa Kabuto, uh, my colleague, uh, conference officers, uh, directors here present, uh, present, including all church workers, distinguished faculty and our hard-working support staff, uh, including the uh, college uh, community members and friends. Good morning. Good morning. I feel greatly honored uh, to participate uh, with you at this uh, momentous occasion where we gather to celebrate the inauguration of the 16th president of Helderbeck College of Higher Education, Dr. Shailene Reneke. My brothers and sisters, this inauguration couldn't have come at a right time such as this when Helderbeck College of Higher Education, our first landmark uh, institution in Africa, uh, is celebrating is celebrating 130 years of extensive and um, uh, uh, important missionary work in, in Southern Africa and even beyond. Uh, together, we can joyously say, Ebenezer, the Lord has led us thus far from the humble, trebilizing, sacrificial leadership of our pioneers, 
Helderbeck College of Higher Education has grown to become an accredited institution of higher learning, and it continues to provide holistic quality education in line with the Adventist philosophy of education. We praise the Lord for that. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we still believe that education is at the core of the Great Commission, as recorded in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. Go ye therefore, these are our marching orders, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you unto the very end of the world. Now, you'll notice that the word teach is undoubtedly the most prominent in the passage. So thus, the Great Commission is essentially an educational challenge and an educational enterprise. It is the methodology, uh, the chief or key methodology that Christ used uh, in propagating the gospel. Um, this could be the reason why Marquis, a renowned Christian educator, you know, uh, captures it in a very dramatic way when he writes, Christ was often a healer, sometimes a worker of miracles, frequently a preacher, but always a teacher. So, brothers and sisters, we need to understand that the work of education and the work of redemption are one. That's what Ellen White says in the book Education, page uh, 30. It is in this recognition of the integral role of education uh, that actually motivated the pioneers of this church to establish mission schools in unentered territories of which Claymont Mission, later to be called Elderbeck College of Higher Education, became the first educational institution to be established in the whole of Africa in the year 1893. And we praise the Lord for that. We celebrate this historic inauguration of Dr. Shailene in the context of our reflection of the journey this institution has traversed, including milestones of success and how the college leadership managed you know, to navigate this institution through the uneven terrains down through the ages. Such critical and vital knowledge should never be forgotten. <clears throat> we need to archive that information. It's critical information. It constitutes the foundational blocks of our institutional intelligence, which strengthens our ability to address future challenges. Today, my brothers and sisters, is a historic and a special day for the Helderbeck uh, administration faculty staff and students, and more so for our esteemed and new president, Dr. Shailene Renick. Her appointment came after a protracted, diligent search uh, conducted professionally by the search committee and ratified by council in the Southern Africa Union Conference Council. Time and again, I would ask my colleague, the union director, Sister uh, uh, Kathy, do we have a name? Do, do we now have a name? And she would say, we're almost there. We're almost there. We have re-advertised. We are now interviewing. We have finished the short, short listing. And, and finally, when I got the news that Dr. Shailene Renneke is now um, seconded uh, to, to the council, and uh, she is the one that we are, we are presenting to council and executive uh, uh, committee, I was satisfied knowing that she had served faithfully here as deputy president for academic affairs for a long time. Uh, and, Brothers and sisters, this is what you call leadership development. And we thank God for that. I want to remind us that inauguration is like a wedding in many res respects. And that's why we are putting on some, you know, this special regalia. It's like a wedding, and that's why there are speeches. And also, uh, there is also taking of oaths 
in a way, it's like a wedding. The main purpose is to bring together, to bond the in institution with its new leadership. When properly meshed, the appointed leadership is expected to take this institution to greater heights of excellence. Remember what Ellen White says, higher than the highest human thought can reach is God's ideal for his children. Godliness and God-likeness is the goal to be reached. Inauguration, my brothers and sisters, is also a time of reflection and introspection. We and we are saying to ourselves, as Helderbeck, how far have we gone in extending the frontiers of mission? How are our products faring in the job market? Our graduates, how are they faring in the community at large? It is also a time for strategic refocus into the future to make our institution relevant to the imperatives of the fourth industrial re revolution and also artificial intelligence. Inauguration, brothers and sisters, of new leadership marks a turning point in the institution's history and its trajectory. It's the beginning of a new chapter uh, for the institution. Uh, and we, uh, right now, we are on the cuff, right on the cuff of transiting into the leadership of Dr. Rennick. What do we say? <laughs> uh, and transitions sometimes are uncomfortable to us uh, because uh, transitions, uh, you know, change is always sometimes, you know, uncomfortable. Yet transitions liberate us from the dominance of yesterday, the dominance of a status quo. Transitions push us out of the comfort zone. So we do things differently to enhance institutional relevance in our ever-changing society. So we gather here to inaugurate our new president, Professor Reineke, uh, um, uh, in, even as we, 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 we inaugurate here, we are also reminded of the vital role of higher education uh, in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, um, especially its role in providing manpower to the church and also shaping the future of society. Higher education at this dawn of the fourth industrial revolution faces many challenges as mirrored by the following mega trends uh, which impact education. Number one, the need for lifelong learning as employees require to reskill constantly. They would need uh, to reskill and upskill to match galloping uh, phenomenal developments in technology. This should inform even our recruitment strategy and our staff development uh, strategy. Number two, labor skills mismatch as a result of automation. The gap between what employers need and what education provides is a widening. Research reveals that seven out of 10 employees are currently in jobs where the future of their career is uncertain. Hence, the need for adaptation of our curriculum, our programs to suit global trends in the job market. And if we don't do that, we will become fossils. We will become fossils. We become irrelevant, irrelevant uh, to the current dynamics in education. Number three, dwindling uh, financial support because of the unprecedented impact of COVID-19 pandemic on global economics. So institutions are challenged and are encouraged to explore strategies of increasing revenue streams, including, uh, you know, uh, appropriating research grants and also establishing viable and productive industries. Number four, talking about these global trends, increase the intense competition in higher education for students and resources. The good news is that Helderbeck College of Higher Education belongs to a family of continental and global family of Seventh-day Adventist institutions of higher learning. We have 24 universities in Africa and close to 200 universities in the world. We have a unique opportunity as Helderbeck to partner and collaborate with sister institutions to strengthen the rigor of our programs and also 
uh, to uh, uh, mobilize resources and also do ex student exchange and also um, exchange in the area of institutional or instructional methodology and our research output. And so my brothers and, 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 and sisters, here is an opportunity. Ours is a time, of course, of great challenges. And at the same time, it is a time of great opportunities for Helderbeck. This post-COVID-19 era um, that we are in is characterized by a time of rising and deepening educational in inequality. As a Christian institution, we need to explore strategies of making sure that uh, Adventist higher education is accessible to all our struggling communities. Um, and I believe in what uh, the President of uh, the Republic of Zambia, His Excellency Mr. Ichilema Hakainde said, uh, when he said, you know, education is a great equalizer. It is an effective method of leveling the ground for our young people. And so, my brothers and sisters, these examples of global mega trends have, I have mentioned, present hefty responsibilities and lofty expectations of university presidents. Universities are not just hubs of academic knowledge. They should explore new frontiers of solving problems, offer alternative solutions, prepare students for the world of work, and contribute to production of goods and services, and most importantly in our context, contribute to the growth and mission of the church. And so, Professor Renick, this is not going to be a walk in the park. It's not going to be a walk in the park. Our vice chancellors, our presidents in our institutions and colleges grapple and wrestle with difficult searching questions. How can we position our institution for academic excellence while fostering the mission of the church and retaining our Adventist identity in, in, in the context of pluralism? How can we make our academic community reach greater heights of competence while remaining true to our message? How can we make our academic programs relevant to the work environment in the church and the world at large? How can we make our students be at the center of all, all our operations and create in them ambassadors of our institutions, our institution, wherever they go? How can we stretch our scarce resources to ensure that things that matter most are funded? How can we retool and upskill our faculty and staff to ensure that we serve our students, church, and community brilliantly and adequately? And so I repeat once again, this is not a walk in the park. <laughs> On your own, you cannot do it. The good news is that we have the Lord, the Lord himself. The Lord himself is going to guide you, who is going to lead you. His name is Jesus, the chief master teacher. He will be with you. He will be with you. And so you'll be called upon to be our strategic leader, visionary leader for this institution. It is important for you to come up with a clear vision for this institution because vision is what impels, compels, and propels an institution. The power of leadership is in vision. Vision is the leader's presentation of tomorrow's realities today. Your vision for the future of this institution must never be muted by administrative assignments and activities. It must never. And I pray that the, God, the Lord gives you a clear vision, vision for this institution like he did to Nehemiah in the Bible. One distinctive feature of the book of Nehemiah, I commend to you the book of Nehemiah. One distinctive feature of this book is that there are no overt miracles recorded in the book. Nobody is healed. Nobody is raised from the dead. Nobody walks on water. Nobody feeds thousands from meager resources. God simply provides a leader 
with favor, strength, and wisdom. That's the greatest miracle God wrought for the returnees coming back from the Babylonian captivity. I pray that the Lord uh, blesses Helderbeck with your leadership. And with your leadership, we know we have a full package of blessings. You remember when Nehemiah arrived at the scene of labor to rebuild the broken walls of Jerusalem? He was assailed with compounding you know, challenges and discouraged the people spiritual declension amongst the people, intense opposition and ridicule from Sanbalt, Tobiah, and Geshem. And I want to submit to you, Prof, that uh, um, it is a divine blessing for you to face opposition because that's part of uh, divine confirmation, confirmation that you are in the right direction. You, remain, you remember aeroplanes. Planes can't lift without opposing winds. <clears throat> so without opposing winds, planes will continue, you know, they will continue on the runway. So without opposition sometimes, there is no divine lift. So opposition actually is an invitation to wrestle with God in prayer. And in spite of all the challenges, uh, Nehemiah um, succeeded in restoring the walls. In Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 15, as we conclude, the Bible says, The wall was completed on the 25th day of Elal in 52 days. And uh, in 52 days, the wall was completed. Why? Because Nehemiah spent four months praying agonizing, supplicating before the Lord. And he rose from that prayer impregnated with a burden from on high. And I pray that God will give you this burden, the burden to take Helderbeck to greater heights. A burden is a Holy Spirit-infused resentment of the status quo that propels us into action to address our current situation. A burden is a divine grief that arrests our spirit. It makes us see greater possibilities. It snatches us from comfort to commission, from spectator to active participant in restoring the honor of God. A burden is an impregnation of divine agitation. You become jealousy of the cause of God. And, and, and you say to God, why should your name, O God, be reviled amongst the heathens? That's, that's a burden. I'm praying that the Lord will put a burden in your heart to transform this institution into an institution to reckon with. A world-class Christian institution. David Livingstone received a letter from one representative of the London Missionary Society. And this is what the, law, the, the letter said. Have you found a good road to where you are? This was his response. He said, uh, oh, the letter continued. The information continued. <clears throat> the inquiry continued. If so, we want to send men to join you. Have you found a good road where you are? We want to send men to join you. The farmer's missionary wrote back immediately. This is what he says. And I would like us to capture it. He says, if you have men who will come only if they knew there is a good road. I don't want them. I want men who will come and create a highway in the wilderness, straight paths in the jungle. Oh, yes, David Livingstone had a burden from the Lord. I pray that the Lord places a burden on your heart. Let the joy of today carry you during all challenging times that are ahead of us. I congratulate you. As you take your new role, God bless you. May the Lord's blessings accompany you. May he go ahead of you. May he continue to smile at you. Is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Prof. Njini, thank you for the challenge. It was not meant for Prof. Shalin only, but also was meant for us. Good morning, friends. I would like to acknowledge uh, the former council member, uh, uh, Pastor Chris Botha. Thank you for making it say. I don't know what you do every morning to your hair. Put some flour, some, but it looks very good. Thank you so much. <laughs> I also would like to acknowledge the TOC leadership. I only, I only invited them, I think it was Thursday, when uh, Pastor Nech and I were in Harare, and I'm glad that uh, he has taken the challenge to come. We need these presidents to visit us from time to time. Uh, Pastor Nechi Fulani, president of the Trans Orange Conference. Can you stand, please? Let's recognize you. Thank you. Yes, yes. So, so the employer is here. We also have um, Pastor Temba Masego, the executive secretary. We'll ask him to stand as well. Stand in front of one, that's the mighty TOC. <laughs> I would like also to acknowledge in a special way here, Prof. Gerald Dupree. I don't, I don't remember a time when you have missed an important occasion at Helderberg College, whether it's graduation, whether whatever it is we are here, that's dedication. And maybe I would like to challenge Helderberg College that uh, when meet in, on occasions like these, let us not miss inviting the former presidents. I think it's important uh, that former presidents must come because they carry the name wherever they are. I'm talking to Yeni here, I'm talking to Tony. Between the two of them, they will find money to make sure that <laughs> on occasions like this, we have our former presidents, our former leaders, you know, who will, who will lead us. Prof. Charlene Reneke is an, accept, an experienced, I'm reading from what you have, I think it's easier, an experienced and accomplished. Now I must be careful here because this word that I'm calling Sybil, uh, that I'm going to mention now, if you don't pronounce it correctly, the false teeth might just fall off. <laughs> an accomplished academician, they haven't, they haven't they haven't fallen down, they are still here. Thank you so much. With 36 years service in the church organization, of which 32 years were served at Helderberg College of Higher Education. She holds the following educational qualifications. She matriculated at Helderberg College with exemption, Helderberg High School, sorry, Helderberg High School. Then from there, of course, she taught here as well. So she's a true Helder Begite. I don't know if there's a name like that. If it's not there, I've just invented it. And then she spent all her life at Stellenbosch. She knows the road. She can drive from here to Stellenbosch without even opening her eyes. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts, Stellenbosch University. Honors Bachelor of Arts, Counseling, Psychology, Stellenbosch. Higher Education Diploma Postgraduate Secondary, secondary Stellenbosch, <laughs> Master of Arts, Stellenbosch Cum Laude, and Doctor of Philosophy, you can guess, what is it? <laughs> Stellenbosch. Thank you, thank you so much. I was fascinated here by the, by the Master's thesis and the doctoral dissertation. I try to understand what it means, I still don't know. But there's one word I understood in the doctoral one. The master's one, the alignment of mind style with four categories of specialization in South African psychology. I can see Pastor Alexander there is wondering what is happening. <laughs> uh, and the doctoral dissertation, I only understand one word there, Shalin, because it's a theological name or word beyond vicarious trauma, listen to that, exploring adversarial growth in a sample of South African paramedics. I still don't understand that. She will have to explain to me one day what it is. 
Prof. Reinick started her career at Helderbeck, teacher at Helderbeck High School in 1987 until 1990. In 1991, she joined Helderbeck College, as it was known then, as a lecturer in the psychology department. In 2006 to 2012, she served as a lecturer and dean of the Faculty of Arts from 2013 until 2023. She served as Vice President for Academic Administration at Helderberg College of Higher Education. 10 years of faithful uh, service at this college. Maybe this is important as well on a personal level. Prof has a sister, Karin, who lives in Ireland with her husband, Derek, and their son, uh, Francis. Interestingly, her paternal aunt, Mrs. Rebecca Jubé, oh, served as the college president secretary for 13 years. Some of those was with me. What an organized lady she was before retiring in 2013. That's the person we are all about here at this time. Prof, I'm going to ask you to stand now as we uh, do the, the commissioning or as we do the charge. Let's do the charge first, then we can dress you up. Or should we, should we dress, dress her up first? Maybe let's dress her up first before we do, we do the, the charge. Thank you so much. Can somebody help me? Um, Kai Kathy, you are the right person to, to, to help me. Ladies and gentlemen, as she faces you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Prof. Charlene Reineke, or Rene is another name. Reineke, I charge you to look to Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. And to remember that you can only be a leader of others best if you are a servant of Jesus Christ. I charge you to give strong spiritual leadership by articulating the principles of the gospel and achieving greater focused attention on the mission of the church um, and the college. I charge you to continue strengthening the prominence and importance of the college to the world with special attention to the enhancement of the college's church and public image. I charge you to lead the college in achieving academic excellence in, con in continuation of a long-range planning process in which the college already is engaged. I charge you to develop the areas in which the college should give focus, emphasis. These include research, its national and international role, its cross-cultural heritage, its ongoing transformation process, and the growing need in such areas of professional education. I charge you to give due diligence to careful and prudent management of all college departments, always eager to advance it according to its mission, and yet heeding the simple truth that bigger is not always better, only better is better. To accept your role, 
now as scholar servant leader to so lead this institution that every young mind and heart that grows here will come to appreciate their heritage and response to the high calling of what it means to be a Helderberg woman or a Helderberg man while committed to mission. To these seven areas, I charge you, Prof. Charlene Renee Renneke. We, you know, I would like to us to do the signing of this charge in front of all of, all of you so that it's meaningful. There was a pen that came from that side and I, and I knew that that pen was a good one, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it came. Thanks, thanks, thanks. This is my old friend. Uh, we were at Bethel together in 1980, 1980, 1981, somewhere there. We were at school together. He was my senior, though. I must admit. Thank you. I'm signing first, then I'll have the education director of the union sign, then we'll have Prof. Sharin do that. Let's do it because, it's not, let's not do it in the corners there. Let's do it here. Just you can see that we can be able to sign as well. We don't just sign letters and what you call, we also sign charges. Thank you so much. Is, is that all? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us struggle to sign. Prof, you can come now and do your signature as, a, as a, an acknowledgement that you have been charged. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is not mine. Shall we bow our heads as we pray? Our God, our maker, our king, and our redeemer, we want to worship you for who you are. We want to thank you at this moment for this occasion. We thank you for this institution. And we thank you for appointing Professor Shalin Reineke for the task that we have in mind for her. But we know we need to commit her to you. We need to consecrate her to you and to dedicate her. And so at this time, Lord, we bring her before you that you may be able to use her. We pray that you may use the talents that you have given to her, the skills that you have given to her, that she may be used to honor you and to glorify you and to be a blessing to the people that she works with. We pray that you may grant her the vision that you have in mind for her. We pray that you may give her the wisdom to be able to work towards that vision, the courage and the strength that she needs. We pray that you may also give to her the patience that she needs as she interacts with people. And we want to ask that you may guide her, that you may keep her close to you. We pray that through her ministry here, many people may be drawn closer to you. May it be that somebody will be found in the kingdom because of the work that she does. We want to pray also for the lecturers, the staff who work with her. We pray that you may give them the grace to be able to be supportive and to, uh, to, to help in whatever way that you have appointed them. We want to pray for the students as well. We pray for this institution, that you may bless it and continue to guide us as we go through uh, the programs that you have in mind for us. And so we commit Professor Reineke into your hands and we want to ask that you may guide her, that you may lead her, keep her in good health. We pray that you may also provide for her the people who will be able to support her in this role that she does. 
continue to guide us and bless her in every way we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. President of the Southern Africa Union Conference and Chairperson of the College Council, Dr. Paul Shongwe. Guest of Honor, Dr. Felix Ngini, Education Director of the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division. Officers of the Southern Africa Union Conference, Mrs. Catherine Kabutu Njekwa, Education Director, Pastor Mandla Lupondwana, Executive Secretary, and Mr. Tony Nearings, Chief Financial Officer. Council Member, Dr. Mafu Rakometsi, Chief Executive Officer of Umalusi, and other council members present. Presidents and officers of the various Southern African Union conferences. Former presidents of Helderberg College of Higher Education, Dr. Tankiso Letsedi, Professor Vincent Njeti, Dr. Paul Shongwe, Dr. Gerald Deprier, and Pastor Dave Allen. Distinguished guests, staff, students, and alumni, ladies and gentlemen. I would also like to acknowledge my sister and brother-in-law, Karen and Derek Irwin, watching now from Kinvara in Ireland, and my nephew, Francis. My cousin, Suzelle, and her husband, Adrian Nechrini. Ingrid and Jean-Marc Chelin. Incidentally, Ingrid and I met on the first day of Standard 8, or Grade 10, here at Helderberg High School. And my friend, Avril Nivot. I can never thank you enough for your support, care, and encouragement, and I express my heartfelt gratitude. Dr. Ingenie, I think somehow we saw each other's speeches, <laughs> parts of each other's speeches. Thank you so much for the, the inspiring, the motivating message, the apt um, description of education sector, the highs, but also the realities. Uh, somewhat frightening, <laughs> I think, uh, in the role um, that this position holds. I am truly humbled by the great honor that has been bestowed upon me and the faith that has been put in me in being appointed as the steward of this venerable 130-year-old institution. Although this honor is accompanied by a daunting responsibility, I will strive to fulfill the duties of this position to the best of my ability. As written in Exodus 17, verses 12 to 13, when Moses' arms became tired, Aaron and Hur held up Moses' hands until the sun went down. No leader can accomplish anything alone. Therefore, I pray that God will bestow the necessary strength, grace, and wisdom as I work together with my fellow officers and with each staff member. It is only by working together as a team that we can endeavor to accomplish the college's mission and vision. Helderberg College of Higher Education forms part of an international network of Seventh-day Adventist education institutions. Founded in 1893 as Claremont Union College it was the first denominational institution outside North America. In 1928, the college relocated to this campus, a 150-hectare fruit farm 
on the slopes of the Helderberg Mountain. Currently, according to the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventist Education Department website, the Denominational Education Network totals 9,489 schools, colleges, and universities. 111,360 teachers and lecturers, and well over 2 million students in 115 countries. All these institutions subscribe to the SDA philosophy of education, the essence of which is holistic, values-based learning and teaching. About a month ago, I had the privilege of attending the International Society for Academic Advancement Conference and Leadership Forum at Samyuk University in South Korea, where Dr. Lisa Beardsley Hardy, the General Conference Education Director, delivered the keynote address entitled SDA Education After the Pandemic. She emphasized that in a world of change, the core principles of SDA education endure. That is, balanced, holistic development, developing the ability to think and act, not merely reflect others' thoughts, developing practical skills for life, having a redemptive purpose, the centrality of the Bible in learning, restoring the image of God in students, and preparing students for service not in this life, but also for the next, for the whole period of existence. Dr. Beardsley Hardy's summary of the basic principles of the SDA philosophy of education corresponds to the mission statement of the college, as well as its values, as you can see in the program. On a national level, the higher education sector in South Africa has undergone significant changes in the past two or so decades. The academic administration of the college therefore had to undergo and effect major changes to comply with laws and regulations as announced by the Minister of Higher Education and Training, including registration with the department as a private higher education institution. The name changed from Helderberg College to Helderberg College of Higher Education in 2017 was applied for to clarify and emphasize that we are indeed a tertiary institution. It became mandatory that each program of study be accredited by the Council on Higher Education, as well as the registration of all qualifications offered on the National Qualifications Framework by SACWA, the South African Qualifications Authority. Rigorous quality assurance management became mandatory and remains an essential function in order to ensure compliance with the rigorous cycles of registration and re-accreditation. When considering the history and development of Helderberg College of Higher Education over the course of 130 years, we must acknowledge as is true for many, if not all organizations, that the institution has faced challenges. At a capacity building workshop attended earlier this year, Dr. Shirley Lloyd, a well-known higher education specialist, made a presentation on the topic of post-school education and training in South Africa. And she referred to the concept of wicked problems coined in 1973 by design theorists Horst Rittel and Melvin Weber. They introduced, introduced the term wicked problems to draw attention to the complexities and challenges of addressing social policy and planning problems. When looking at wicked problems, the so-called wickedness is very clear according to Churchman. There are economic, environmental, political, social, or cultural issues and challenges that are on a universal scale and seem to be mostly unsolvable. 
Unfortunately, there are many examples of wicked problems, including climate change, disease and public health crises, terrorism, poverty and homelessness, food insecurity, floods, drought, earthquakes, migration, a truly depressing list that goes on and on. It is noteworthy that education is included in the list, particularly in reference to education policies, which is why Dr. Lloyd included it in her presentation. An article on the Stony Brook University website states that unlike tame problems, wicked problems give rise to planning challenges due to a lack of clarity in aims and solutions. Some challenges the college has had to face through the decades have probably been experienced as wicked problems. Some may have been issues unique to a particular period, phase or year in a specific context, while others have remained constant and continue to be present. The COVID-19 pandemic has arguably been the biggest wicked problem experienced in recent years. One which has had a devastating effect globally. The lockdowns caused great disruption to our lives and had and are still having severe economic and financial consequences. It was no different for the college. In March 2020, we had to send our students home and revert to emergency remote teaching or online teaching in a matter of days. Dual or hybrid mode teaching followed ERT with contact classes being phased in again since last year. Although more than three years have passed, the impact of COVID-19 is still evident in as much as our enrollment is not quite back to pre-pandemic numbers due to the financial challenges that students, parents and sponsors face and challenges having become even more exacting. Dr. Lloyd pointed out that the concept of wicked problems was intended to support policy and decision makers in understanding and designing meaningful governance interventions to deal with them, and that we should be realistic when we are deliberating, planning, and deciding on courses of action and proceeding to the implementation thereof. Courtney Johnson Woods agrees that wicked problems require thoughtful and holistic collaboration on solutions and proposes the triple A strategy approach that includes three stages, namely awareness, acceptance, and adaptation. In other words, we need to acknowledge the existence of wicked problems, admit to their complexity, and counter the challenges they bring with alternative strategies. John Camillus comments that it is imperative for an organization to envision the future for the next 10, 20, or even 50 years. This could aid in strategies becoming apparent, thus providing invaluable guidelines for those involved in governance and strategic planning. In contrast to its catastrophic definition and reality, the wicked problem concept can therefore, thankfully, be utilized in a positive manner. The college has a standing strategic planning and monitoring committee. With the current 2021 to 2030 strategic plan revisited and revised as necessary. It is the function of the strategic plan to be aware, to accept and to adapt as per the AAA strategy. It is its objective to proactively address both tame and wicked problems by way of 20 identified focus areas, including modern, monet, modernizing the infrastructure and facilities, increasing the number of qualifications offered, a growing enrollment, 
continuing to pursue a third stream income, initiating fundraising projects, establishing a faculty of education, and continuing to build academic capacity. However, we have to recognize the significant milestones throughout the institution's history that have been reached. The numerous examples of the college's strengths and accomplishments in various areas, of which I mention only a few. The natural beauty and aesthetics of our campus on the slopes of our mountain overlooking False Bay our well-qualified lecturers and committed staff in various departments, small classes where students can enjoy personal attention, where they can build confidence and proficiency and develop leadership skills. That despite the financial challenges we have been confronted with, the college has received unqualified audits for the past seven years due to the finance department's prudent administration and the financial policies and controls that are in place and implemented. The student services department that cares for the needs of students and organizes a variety of social activities. The chaplaincy that provides vibrant and meaningful spiritual programs and finally, are more than 3,000 alumni who are working and serving in various prestigious capacities all over the world. We will continue our proud tradition of producing graduates who not only leave this alma mater with academic and practical knowledge in their respective fields of study, but graduates who have also become critical thinkers during their time here, challenged by their lecturers to not be mere reflectors. Graduates who will retain a passion for lifelong learning, live out the values, and be inspired to provide service wherever they may find themselves. We look to the future where the college will apply for a changed mode of delivery from just contact to blended and online learning, this opportunity having arisen as a result of COVID. And further, due to a proposed change in legislation for private higher education institutions, there may be the prospect for the college to apply for a change of status as a university college complying with various criteria, of course. Today, Jeremiah 29, verse 11, is particularly appropriate. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. God has led and provided for this institution, his institution, for 130 years now. We can testify how he has bestowed blessings even the, in, during the most difficult of times. And for this, we can only give him the glory. My predecessor, Dr. Tankiso Letsedi, in his inauguration address, referred to the fact that should you Google the best private colleges or universities in South Africa, you would find Helderberg College of Higher Education on the list. On checking a day ago, I can assure you and proudly say that we are still on the list, in fact, more than one. This means that the college is being recognized as a high caliber institution. Let this provide us the inspiration and motivation to continue to serve to keep our focus on being an institution of choice and to continue providing quality, values-based higher education. I thank you.
Good morning, everyone. I'll be reading some of the messages that Dr. Charlene Reneker received. Um, dear Prof. Charlene Reneker, function good health and in high spirits. I'm writing to extend my warmest congratulations to you on your remarkable appointment as the newly elected president of Heidelberg College of Higher Education. This is indeed a well-deserved achievement and a testament to your dedication, expertise, and leadership in the field of education. As you embark on this new and exciting chapter, Please know that you have the support and admir admiration of colleagues, friends, and well-wishers who recognize the importance of your role and the positive impact you will undoubtedly have on the college community. Congratulations on your appointment, Prof. Reneka. I pray that the Lord will fill your tenure as president with accomplishments, growth, and the fulfillment of your vision for the institution. I look forward to witnessing the great strides that Halbert College will undoubtedly take under your leadership. Sincerely, Pastor Danny Pothitter, Human Resource Manager of the Cape Conference. On behalf of the Association of South African Private Higher Education, I extend our heartfelt congratulations to you on your historic appointment as the first female president of Haldeberg College of Higher Education. <laughs> this is indeed an extraordinary milestone, not only for Haldeberg College, but also for the broader landscape of private higher education. As an association dedicated to advancing and promoting private higher education, SAPHE applauds the remarkable history of Heldeberg College and its commitment to academic excellence. The institution's philosophy, centered around the holistic development of the whole person, encompassing the head, heart, and hand, resonates deeply with our shared values. Once again, congratulations on this significant achievement. We look forward to witnessing the positive impact you will undoubtedly make as you lead HCHE into a new chapter of growth and excellence. Warm records, Nancy and Eves, Program Manager of SAPHE. I am thrilled that you are the first female president of Haldever. I'm also very proud to know you personally, May God's richest blessings be on you as he endows you with everything you need to fulfill your new responsibilities. We have been praying for the best candidate to be appointed as president, and we will continue to pray for you and for God's college. Much loves and blessing, Hel Heldever, Mrs. Judy Rose. Blessings to the new president. She has been part of the college and has seen its movement through many transitions since the 90s. Her experience and expertise might just be what the Adventist Academia needs to figure out its future into uncertainties of the new realities. Hel Heldeberg, Imas Mbunelo, alumnus. Congratulations, professor. We wish you God's richest blessing as you assume this huge responsibility at this prestigious institution with its illustrious and proud history. As you build on the work of those who have gone ahead and take the institution to greater heights, we wish you well and God's grace. Hail Heldeberg, Dr. Gerald Duprez, former SAU Director and HCHE President. I kindly convey my heartfelt congratulations to Dr. Charlene, a well-deserved achievement. May her tenure be filled with success, growth, and fulfillment. Please know that my prayers and best wishes will be on the whole college community as you embark on this new journey. Mrs. Sophia Rubin, Cape Conference Education Director. Thank you. At this time, we're going to invite our registrar, Dr. Adrian Platz, to give the benediction. 
and uh, you will stand for the benediction. And after, we'd kindly ask you to remain seated as uh, we have the recession of the platform party. Shall we stand? Let us bow our heads as we receive the blessing given to Aaron. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. Sorry, I just want to make one announcement for the students. After the procession is finished, there is our Health um, Wellness Week program taking place. So um, please go through to the gym and make use of all of the um, stalls, etc., that have been prepared for you. Thank you.